uh, the fourth problem and this is what we have to do this time and uh, as soon as you see it you should recognize that this is partial fraction decomposition right like if this minus was a plus we know that it's tan inverse but it's not a plus it's a minus right okay so uh, going on with partial fraction decomposition we see that 1 over 1 minus x squared can be written as some constant a over and I have many videos on partial fraction decomposition so I'm not going to teach you the method here I mean you can see it <laughs> a over it's going to be 1 minus x and then plus b over uh, 1 plus x as the parentheses there aren't necessary really okay but but yeah so we start like this because clearly um, 1 minus x squared using difference of squares <laughs> factors is uh, 1 plus x times 1 minus x, right? Okay, but then we go, this means that 1 over 1 minus x squared is equal to getting common denominators on the right hand side. We write a times 1 plus x uh, plus b times 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x times 1 minus x, which we know as 1 minus x squared, right? And so now, comparing the left side to the right side, clearly the denominators are the same. So we conclude that 1 must equal a times 1 plus x plus b times 1 minus x. And from here, yes, you can follow systems of equations. Uh, if you write this left side 1 as uh, a linear, which is a 0x plus 1, uh, but the most efficient method is to uh, make strategic choices of x. So if we let um, x equal negative 1, right, because this equation has to hold true for any x, if we let x equal negative 1, we get 1 is equal to, in this part, we're going to get a times 1 minus 1, and so a times 0, and that's why uh, x equals negative 1 was uh, a strategically chosen x value, right? Okay, so we get 0 in this part, and in this part we get uh, 1 minus a negative 1, and therefore multiplying b, that is. So uh, we're going to get 1 plus 1 times b, so that's 2b, from which we see that b is equal to positive 1 half, right? And so similarly, uh, so we see that here b is equal to positive 1 half. I was going to write it there but uh, we need to conserve space so uh, similarly uh, picking another well chosen x value this time one and it should be obvious y one uh, we're going to see that in this equation if we plug in x equals one we're going to get one is equal to uh, 2a plus zero right we're going to get b times one minus one right and so um, what's a a also is a half ah okay so a is a half and b is a half. So this here is equal to this here, right? And by the way, notice that I could factor out a one half, right? I could factor out a one half both from this guy and from this guy and write a one here and a one here and do this, right? And write a one half right here. Yeah? Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So because this here, I tampered with the one. This here is equal to this here. We see that we can replace this integrand right here, which is the same as this, with all of this. And I could write the one half in front of the integral. So I go one half. That's a lot of one halves. Uh, okay, so uh, one over one minus x plus one over one plus x dx. Okay, so we'll have one half times. Oh, I don't know why I'm rewriting <laughs> the same thing. So we'll have one half times. Uh, what's this? It's going to be uh, the natural log of um, the natural log of one minus x. But there's an adjustment required, right? Which is we put a negative here because uh, if you take the derivative of just a natural log of one minus x, you're going to get. Uh, 1 over 1 minus x times a negative 1 by chain rule. So to make up for the negative 1 that chain rule would bring about, put a minus sign right here. And then it's going to be uh, plus the natural log of 1 plus x. And we need to evaluate this since both this part and that part have the same limits. I could just write it like this. And so we need to evaluate from a negative a half to a positive a half, right? Okay, now 
I noticed that if I like put this minus sign right here, right, and change this into a plus and this into a minus, I just swap places. This is what I'll have, right? Um, okay, I just swapped the places of the two uh, parts, right? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, and now we can use log rules. We know that log A minus log B is log um, A over B, right? And so we could write this as as ln of ln of one plus x over one minus x, right? Jesus, a chalkboard like copy and paste would go a long way. And I should put a vertical bar for our integral, minus one half to positive one half, right? Okay, so I'll let you process that while I erase. Okay, and where to from there? Well, okay, so we have our one half right there. So we start with that. And then we're ready to evaluate. So if we plug in one half into this expression, we're gonna get uh, one half times the natural log of what? Well, one plus a half, that's the natural log of three halves, but that's just the numerator divided by. And then when we plug in a half in here, we're gonna get uh, one minus a half, so one half. And then by the evaluation theorem, we have to do minus and then plug that in, right? And so when we plug the second guy in, we're gonna get the natural log of um, one minus a half, so that's a half divided by one minus a negative one half, um, so that's gonna be uh, three halves in here, all right? Okay, 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 and of course, <laughs> okay, so we have one half, and then again, we can use the natural log rule uh, for the difference, right? Uh, so we're gonna get one half times the natural log of, the natural log of uh, three halves over uh, one half divided by, uh, one half over three halves, like that, right? But dividing is the same as multiplying, so it's times uh, three halves, uh, trying to be efficient, like that, right? Okay, okay, okay. So, I, and I need to close my frenzy. So what are we gonna get here? We're gonna get one half of the natural log of you could do this arithmetic uh, more carefully if you'd like, but you're gonna get nine. And now we use another log rule, uh, the power rule or exponent rule for logs, right? The power rule is really like its typical name. So that's gonna allow us to write this one half on top of the argument, the argument of this ln, right? So that's gonna be ln of uh, nine to the one half, but nine to the one half is square root of nine, so we see that our final answer is gonna to reduce to ln of three. Yeah? Okay, cool. This is it for our problem four. Keep watching.